Uh, thanks, Brad. I'd like to uh, thank the organisers for giving me the opportunity to talk to you this afternoon about a project that uh, we've had running for the last couple of years that's just coming to a conclusion. I'd like to start by settling a couple of issues. Um, those of us who were involved in this project showed our well-entrenched prejudices early on. Um, this is not the Mickey Bull project, and so we no longer refer to it as the Mickey Bull project, and nor are we going to talk about bull beef, although I will use that term on one more occasion. We're going to talk about meat quality from grain-finished entire male Bos Indicus cattle. Now, I'd, I'd like to just take a moment to acknowledge the late Xander MacDonald, who was the initiator of this project and a, a major driving force behind it. Um, as I'm sure um, most of you will be aware, um, Xander died earlier this year following an on-farm accident. And uh, Xander was a great supporter of uh, R&D in the beef industry and uh, his untimely passing is a great tragedy for his family and uh, a significant loss to uh, the northern beef industry. So in Australia, and I'm only going to use the term once more, bull beef has traditionally been a byproduct of uh, either cow-calf breeding or uh, the dairy industry. And I think it's largely perceived as uh, producing poorer quality meat and uh, it's certainly heavily discounted in the local trade um, by the, uh, the meatworks. However, in other parts of the world, young entire male cattle are widely utilised for uh, premium beef production, um, particularly in Europe and, uh, and South America, and that's been the case for some time. Um, I uh, visited some abattoirs in Europe back in 95 and was somewhat surprised to see at that time that most of the beef production was coming from young entire males. And that there's uh, growing evidence to support the production of uh, lean beef from young entire males. There are uh, potentially some production benefits and certainly that was the case that uh, with uh, MDH, um, the reason that, that Xander was interested in um, the quality of the meat from in young entire males was um, he had an issue with older calves um, that were being picked up in the second round of mustering on uh, their golf properties and uh, if they were castrated he ended up having to hold them through another wet season before he could turn them off and so he started uh, leaving them as entires and he had a production system in place that allowed him to, uh, to grow them out uh, on the properties at Cloncurry and then put them through the MDH feedlot um, at, at Condamine on the Darling Downs and put them through the works at a, a younger age as young uh, grain finished male cattle. And if you look at the Osmead spec for uh, that particular class of cattle, it says they can be steers, heifers, or entire males, provided they're not showing secondary sex characteristics. And as you'll see in a moment, there are um, significant premiums in terms of uh, weight for age that can be uh, picked up from those animals. And I'm sure that wasn't lost on the Scottish heritage of uh, somebody with the name MacDonald. Um, there are also potential welfare benefits in not castrating uh, older animals particularly. Um, that uh, may um, be uh, of significance in, uh, in some circumstances. And there are certainly, I think, new market opportunities, niche market opportunities, perhaps to put um, beef from entire males into marketplaces where that particular product is uh, valued for cultural reasons. And so the project sought to evaluate carcass yield and quality um, and consumer eating characteristics of young um, short scrotum and entire males, and I'll define that former term for you in a moment. Um, Boss Indicus cattle, all the cattle in this project were high grade Brahmins. Um, and they were compared with uh, animals that were castrated at branding, early castrates, or castrated at weaning, as uh, what we call late castrates. And so just to uh, let you see where the project took place, the um, 
all the calves were sourced from Rutland Plains and Dunbar up on the peninsula there. They were grown out on Devoncourt. They were, at weaning, they were transported from Rutland Plains and Dunbar to Devoncourt, where they were grown out, and uh, then they were subsequently trucked to the Wollumba feedlot, um, fed on grain for 75 days, and then sent for slaughter at, uh, at Dinmore Abattoir of, um, of JBS. And so, um, just to give you the, the four groups in the project, we had an early castrate group that were um, castrated at branding around in somewhere between one and four months of age. A last late castrate group castrated at weaning around 200 kgs. Um, a short scrotum group, which underwent a process of rubber banding um, at the time of, uh, of branding. The process involves pushing the testes up against the abdominal wall and putting a rubber ring below them. The theory being that it holds the testes up against the abdominal wall and interferes with heat regulation and so and therefore spermatogenesis, but it doesn't interfere with testosterone production and so theoretically you'll gain the the uh, growth rate advantage because of that. It's a procedure that's used in some part of the parts of the world. I'm not aware that it, anyone's using it routinely in this part of the world, and I'm not advocating it, and you'll see in a moment why, but uh, I guess the, some of the people associated with the project were curious to see uh, the effect. And we had a group that were left entire uh, throughout the project. At uh, about nine months of age, they were all weaned and, uh, and trucked to Devoncourt, um, where uh, the late castrate group were uh, castrated using a calcrate brand banding procedure. Grown out in Devoncourt to about 350 kgs and then sent to Wollombar and fed on grain for 75 days and slaughtered around about 420 or so kgs. Now, just to uh, illustrate for you some of the uh, issues associated with undertaking a large-scale project like this in the field, um, we set up 665 animals on Rutland Plains and Dunbar, and then along came uh, the uh, 2009 floods in the Gulf, and we recovered about somewhere around about 571, as far as I can calculate, that we got to Devoncourt and then we didn't get uh, too uh, clean a muster of the group from Devoncourt and we ended up uh, sending 528 to Wollombar. We had two deaths in the group and we slaughtered uh, 526. However, I've been around long enough to uh, um, make provision for such uh, events and you can see we still ended up with quite substantial um, numbers in the treatment groups. which. Uh, was a good thing. Now, this is a picture of the cattle in the yards on Dunbar, and if you look very closely, you can see me, I'm there putting ear tags in calves. Okay, and so what sort of data did we collect? Well, we collected the sort of car carcass data that producers um, get routinely in their abattoir feedback sheets, the, the uh, sex uh, of the animals, dentition, hot carcass weight, P8, fat depth, um, butt shape, bruise score, and of course uh, the important one, the gross value of the carcass. Um, all of the carcasses were graded for MSA. Now I should uh, clarify that, given that we have entires and you can class the short scrotum animals as entires as well, and the MSA model does not accommodate um, entire males and so the MSA grading process treated, collected the data but the, they went through the model as they would if they were steers. Okay, now the MSA people are, are reasonably accommodating, I think they would develop the model to uh, handle entire males um, if uh, enough data was made available. But uh, you need to keep that in mind. Okay, so the MSA grading process produces a thing that many of you probably wouldn't, won't have heard of, predicted meat quality score. And just to clarify, it's a grade that's assigned to 40 carcass muscles cooked by up to six alternative methods and then uh, uses a statistical production 
a prediction model to estimate meat, a meat quality index score on a 1 to 100 scale for each muscle by cook outcome. And I'm sure all the producers here knew that. Um, PMQ is based on the MSA grading data that's collected, the percentage boss indicus or hump height. Um, you can, when you put the cattle in for MSA, you declare their boss indicus content, and if you uh, aren't able to do that, then they'll uh, use hump height in the model, and I'll talk a little more about that in a moment. Um, sex, um, HGP status, none of these animals were treated with HGP. We, we thought about it and decided it would overly complicate things, and I think that's work that needs to be done in the future. The carcass weight, ossification, which Dennis mentioned, is measured on a 100 to 590 point scale. Um, marbling assessed at the 5th to 13th rib. The uh, carcass suspension method, which in this case was all um, Achilles hung. And the MSA process also looks at rib fat, um, ultimate pH and meat colour um, and has a, a, a barrier, if you like, that uh, the carcasses have to meet in order to be graded for MSA. Okay, now you may be more familiar with boning groups and Dennis, um, sorry, um, Stuart um, mentioned boning groups before. And uh, on, when you put, send cattle in for MSA grading at the moment, what you get back, you get back the MSA grading data and you also get the animals allocated to boning groups. And boning groups are determined from the predicted meat quality score that I mentioned a moment ago. And, and the boning group is used to group carcasses for boning out purposes in the, the uh, um, abattoir. And it tends to reflect the cuts with the lowest eating quality, which is something to keep in mind. Um, so boning groups apply a standard result across all cattle, um, and as a result, they may mi misrepresent um, some cattle. They're not suitable for a genetic selection tool or a management tool, although um, I know I'm, I'm aware of a number of producers have tried to use them in that uh, manner, but they're not suitable for that. Um, and they're an inefficient method of uh, determining payment of producers as well. Um, but they're extensively used in the trade and they're often used as a misleading marketing tool. Um, and so they're in the process of being replaced by an MSA index um, or a meat, uh, a carcass um, score on meat quality, which is determined using a weighted average of the MSA score for all cuts for which an MSA value has been calculated using the following, where weighing is based on the physical weight of each cut, um, determined from uh, um, previous research work. It assumes the cut is cooked using the most common method of cooking that particular cut, um, and all the values are calculated as if the carcass had been um, um, Achilles hung and uh, aged for five days. Um, and the MSA index is a much more valuable um, tool for genetic selection and um, I think it'll allow producers in the future to apply some selection pressure for uh, meat quality. Um, we also took a, a subsample of the group through to sensory testing by taste panels. We used three muscles, the strip loin, uh, the rump and the eye round from 30 animals in each treatment group and uh, they were tested in a, the standard MSA taste panel test program where each sample is evaluated by 10 consumers for tenderness, juiciness, flavour, overall like and satisfaction and that generates an MQ4 score, a meat quality 4 score and you can just keep that one in mind as well. Um, you can see I've used a, a different colour to highlight uh, um, some of the results and so 30% um, of the carcasses in this trial from the non-castrated animals were graded by the Osmeat graders as they went down the chain in the abattoir as bulls um, versus about 1% of carcasses from castrated animals. Now that was unexpected because 
um, in um, MDH's previous experience, they didn't have such a high rate of grading as, of the animals as bulls rather than just males. And in other groups of animals that we've put through um, the same abattoir since then, um, some animals older than these have all graded male. And, and one can't help but feel that um, the Osmeat grader may have been a little sensitive to the fact that there were bulls or entire males on the chain more so than he would have normally been because of the amount of activity that was going on with people like me running around trying to collect data. Um, <coughs> Castrated animals had lower carcass weights than non-castrated animals, and so there was a, a, a weight for age advantage in, uh, in uh, the, the non-castrated animals. You can see here about 20 uh, kilos um, for a carcass. The interesting thing is if you look at the mean carcass value for the groups, there's no real difference, and that's because even though we suffered a... a, a price penalty for the animals that were downgraded as bulls, it was more than made up for by the premium that we got for the animals, the entire animals that were graded as males. And so I guess it was kind of a no loss situation from that point of view. 87% of animals that graded as bull had two or more permanent incisors um, and so they tended to be the older animals in the, uh, the non-castrated groups, compared with 70% um, um, of the entires that were graded as, um, as male. Um, animals that graded bull were heavier and leaner than those that graded as males, and that was pretty um, um, uniform. And I think that was the, the cue that was triggering uh, um, the downgrades to bulls, it was the bigger carcasses on the chain and the leaner carcasses that were being um, graded as bull rather than male. Okay. Um, I apologise for this figure being a, a little busy, but you can see I've used a contrasting colour um, so that uh, you'll retain the take-home message. Um, so of the animals that are graded male, um, and we can combine the castrated as a look at them as an overall group and the entires as an overall group. You can see there's a, a uh, let's call it a 10 kilo difference increase in hot, or premium in hot carcass weight for the entires that were graded as male um, by the Osmeat grader. Um, but you can see they are... Um, Leaner, they're significantly leaner, but not, uh, not hugely so. Um, and if you look at the gross value, there's about a $50 a carcass premium um, for the entires that have been graded as male. So they've gone through as GFYG, as grain-fed uh, male cattle. However, if you look at the animals that were graded as bull, um, there's obviously a, they're significantly heavier carcasses, they are much leaner and you can see the size of the, the price penalty you suffer if you uh, get downgraded to, uh, um, to bull rather than male in this process. Okay, there were no differences in meat colour or fat colour between any of the treatment groups. Um, it was a little bit of a surprise to us. We had virtually no dark cutters. There were a, a, a few in all groups, but uh, um, and I guess that was a bit of a surprise. I guess we sort of thought there might have been more dark cutters in the entire males, but that was not the case. Um, castrated animals had lower ossification scores, indicating that they were physiologically older, even though they were geographically, uh, sorry, on um, um, calendar um, the same age. Um, carcasses that graded male, had lower ossification scores. Um, castrated animals had higher marbling scores, but it's not a huge difference. Um, marbling scores range from, uh, um, on a scale of 100 to 590, I think it is, and so there's not a huge difference there. And the castrated animals had lower hump heights, but again, not a, a huge difference. Um, castrated animals had higher PMQ scores than un 
castrated animals. Remember the PMQ has predicted meat quality score, which is the outcome of the MSA grading process. It's about two units on a 100 point scale. Um, and it's not uh, hugely significant. Oh, yeah. um, just to, uh, to give you a quick lesson on, on MQ4s, which are the outcome of, of sensory taste panel testing, where the panels um, rank the cut that they're assessing and the tenderness, juiciness, flavour and overall like, and it generates a, uh, a, an MQ4 score on a 1 to 100 scale, and you're probably familiar with the MSA 3, 4 and, star, and 5 star grades, and the current cutoffs are uh, uh, 46 and a half, uh, 64 and 76 on um, that scale. Cuts from castrated animals had higher MQ4 scores than did those from the non-castrated animals that were graded either as male or, or bull. But if you look at this figure, um, the animals that were graded as male by the Osmead grader had MQ4 scores of about 44, and the animals that were graded as bull, for which we were paid significantly less money, were uh, scored the same sort of MQ4 by taste panels. So the taste panels could not tell any difference between the eating quality of the meat from the animals that we got paid significantly less for than uh, the uh, animals that were graded male, um, which is worth keeping in mind. There was a bit of a disparity between the allocation of MSA grades based on either predicted meat quality scores for the carcasses or subsequent MQ4 scores from taste panel testing that's particularly evident for rumps in our case. If you take rump as a general all round average uh, cut then uh, and the reason I've left put that figure there in contrasting colour is in the paper in, you, in the proceedings I think it says 95, um, it should be 91. So. Um, the PMQ, the, the MSA grading process um, would have graded a, about 90% of the rumps as three star, whereas the taste panels graded about 60% of them as three star. You can see for strip loins, which is sort of the, a premium cut on the carcass, um, there's um, no significant difference. So of the three muscles that were sensory tested, only strip loins from the early castrated group were rated by the taste panels as being of higher eating quality than strip loins from late, quality, uh, from late castrate, short scrotum or entire animal. So for the three cuts that were assessed, um, taste panels could not tell the difference between meat quality from castrates or entires um, in this project with the exception of the strip loins from early castrated animals which they rated higher. And so essentially there's really no difference in meat quality between the animals except for that premium cut from early castrated animals. Meat quality as measured by MQ4 didn't differ between carcasses of non-castrated animals that were graded as either a steer or bull, although carcasses from the castrated animals had higher MQ4 scores. There's no difference in growth performance between castrated and non-castrated animals prior to their entering the feedlot. They were just starting to come into puberty as uh, at the final stages of growing out on Devon Court and up until that point there was no difference in growth rate. However, after 75 days of, of grain feeding, during which time the bulls that would have achieved puberty, um, the non-castrated animals were about 4% heavier and 11% um, and had 11% higher average daily gain than castrated animals. And so in conclusion, grain finishing production systems um, utilising entire male cattle can offer producers the opportunity to achieve a sig significantly higher gross value for their cattle due to the inherently superior weight for age um, provided a significant rate of downgrade to bull can be avoided. 
Production of high quality beef from entire males may offer some niche marketing opportunities, particularly into some of the Southeast Asian markets where, where that product uh, may be of uh, higher value for cultural reasons. And grain finishing of entire animals at a younger age than their castrated counterparts may help to avoid the uh, level of downgrade due to the appearance of secondary sex characteristics and help facilitate that premium sale price. Um, there are some issues um, that are apparent in this project with relation to uh, MSA grading, I think particularly of high Boss Indicus content cattle, which these were, and I think there's, uh, it demonstrates a need for some additional research in that area um, regarding MSA grading of, of high Boss Indicus content cattle. And this is really the take home message, I think, which is why I put a bunch of asterisks on it. There's clearly scope to improve the quality and consistency of meat from Boss Indicus genotypes in Northern Australia, and I'm leaving out whether they're entire or not, just in general, with a majority of carcasses from young cattle producing cuts of MSA three-star grade, good every day if you like, as being a realistic goal, and now with the MSA index, producers have a, uh, a tool that they can use to uh, um, improve the overall meat quality of their their animals. Um, and just a picture of, of um, the end result, I guess, of our project. And these things aren't done by, by uh, individuals. There's a, a bunch of people that uh, were behind this uh, project, and I'd like to acknowledge them.